Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada, and this is another uh, Bring a Trailer preview. Um, the uh, car uh, that is next up for auction is this 1986 uh, Jaguar XJSC Cabriolet. And uh, I happen to have two of these at the moment. The uh, red car is on the hoist and the brown car is the, sorry, antelope car is the uh, subject car of this auction, but I put the red car up on the hoist, sorry, it's a cranberry car, um, the cranberry car up on the hoist just to uh, add uh, some color to it and uh, describe maybe some of the features of the XJS and which you can only see in there. All right, so um, both these cars uh, come from friends of mine that their parents owned um, and uh, and they're not and they're not uh, using anymore and uh, I wound up buying them and going through the refurbishment process uh, for these cars um, the brown car uh, hasn't run for well it hasn't really been used for about 10 years or a little bit more um, and uh, I took the car and we uh, did an assessment of it I took it to my mechanic who uh, runs XJ auto service and who uh, PDI'd these cars when they were new and has worked on Jaguar V12s every day of his life for the last like 50 years. So um, knows everything about the cars. And so I probably wouldn't have bought them if I didn't have that resource. And so this uh, brown uh, Antelope um, XJS uh, was uh, sold new in Winnipeg and it came to Calgary when it was a few years old and bought by my, my friend's uh, father, um, used, used for I don't, know, I don't know, five or ten years or so, and then and then given to the, the son-in-law. Uh, he used it for a little while, um, and then uh, moved to Hawaii, parked the car. Okay, so then I've taken it now, and then recommissioned it. So it went to XJ, it went to XJ Auto, and I I didn't get an estimate. I just said sort the car out, do everything you need. I I know a sit who's the owner of XJ Auto. Is, uh, he's 75 now. He's not going to be, uh, you know, working for that much longer. And I knew that I, I just needed him to do all the work on the car um, at, at once. So I, I just left it to him. Um, I did, you know, we, we, we took the subframe off the car and there were numerous leaks from, you know, uh, gaskets. I have a copy of that uh, uh, invoice uh, in, the, in the Bring a Trailer uh, uh, photo stack. Um, and there was upper and lower gaskets and all the stuff that he said you should do when you're in there um, because uh, to get at the engine you have to lower the, the, the front subframe. I'll go through that later in the video to get at everything and that's a pretty big job. So once you've, once you've you know, taken the suspension off then you might as well sort everything out. You don't want to, that's not the time to skimp is when you get the car apart and then put it all back together again and then figure out something else that's leaking, okay? So we did it all at once. I got a bill for about uh, $8,000. Um, the tires were old, so I replaced them with um, a Redestein Sprint Classic. They're a speed rated tire uh, and they're expensive. Uh, any speed, any, you know, it's a 215 uh, 70 VR15. So you really only get the, the, uh, the, the remanufactured performance tires from the 70s. There's a Pirelli P5, XWX, and the Redestines, and, and they're all expensive tires. That's why just about every XJS you see for sale has got like crappy no-name tires on it, because they're the, but they're not speed rated, okay? So I put the proper tires on the car, uh, gave it some cosmetics. Uh, I did a, a little bit of paint work um, just on the areas, you know, behind the wheels where it got some gravel rash. So, um, and I coated it with a little bit of pore 15 just in those areas where the drain holes are. Um, not because there's any soft metal in the car whatsoever, uh, but just because that pore 15 is just super tough stuff and it's the right thing to use, you know, behind the wheels. So I did that. Uh, so touched up the paint a little bit, polished it. Um, you know, I, I put some uh, leather eek, uh, which is what the most of the Rolls Royce and Bentley guys use uh, on the leather to, uh, to bring it back as it was sitting for a while. And then drove the car for a while, and 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 you know I don't need two XJSs, so we'll putting one of them on bring a trail at least, and uh, we'll go through the videos. My videos, my video presentations uh, for bring a trailer are are long and detailed, and uh, so what I do is I can talk about the car a little bit uh, about what the XJS is. Um, there's a lot more information easily accessible on the web for that. I won't get into that for too much in this video. 
Uh, and then I'll do a walk around of the exterior. Uh, I have a paint meter, so we'll go through uh, and uh, paint meter each individual panel, which shows it to be an original paint car. Uh, we'll go through the interior of the car. I'll point out uh, all the flaws uh, in the car, uh, and then we'll put the car on a hoist. We'll go through the underneath of the car and show you what it looks like under there. And then um, finally, we'll do a road test for the car. Um, and then listen to the engine and so forth. And then um, I want to do an interview with a sit on the car, the, the guy who did the work. Um, you know, what I'm trying to do with these videos is to you know, replicate, you know, what you'd have maybe in a showroom experience uh, where, you know, you'd go and talk to somebody who hopefully has half an idea what he's talking about. And then you view the maintenance records of the car. And then maybe if you're lucky, the guy can take you in the shop, you can put it on the hoist, you can look at it underneath, you can get the mechanic over, he can tell you what he did to the car, and all that goes towards, you know, instilling some confidence, uh, which in a 70s Jaguar XJS is kind of important because, you know, these cars are relatively plentiful, expensive to maintain, and, um, you know, hardly any of these are, you know, from the first owner who maintained it properly. And so there's every variety of, uh, of car out there, just from complete basket cases and so on. And, you know, a, a, you don't want to buy a cheap Jaguar XJS, okay? Like, you just, you just don't. You know, it's, it's, you, you want something where somebody who knows what they're doing has gone through the car and done everything properly. It's absolutely critical with these cars. And, uh, and these two examples just happen to be, to be in that category. So um, I'll turn this camera around and we'll start with the uh, walk around of the exterior, paint meter and the interior on the hoist. Uh, then we'll see it running, do a road test, and then we'll uh, do an interview with a sit who, who worked on the car. And by that, you know, it's probably could be up to two hours of footage altogether. Uh, but by the end of that, if you're thinking about buying this car, then, you know, you won't you, you wouldn't even have this good a presentation in a showroom because um, they wouldn't even have the luxury of the hoist so I hope that that will go some way to uh, giving uh, any potential buyer the confidence uh, necessary to uh, bid on on this car let's turn the camera around okay so let's do a walk around of this car of the panels uh, I'll show you uh, any flaws, uh, where it's been touched up, uh, any paint chips or scratches that have been uh, touched up. Um, and then we'll go to a paint meter report on all the panels, and then I'll go into the inside of the car. Okay, so um, starting with the bonnet, um, as you call it, uh, there isn't any real faults to detect on it. I am missing the... Um, grommet behind this Jag emblem and I can't find it um, and I can cut it out of rubber but it should have a piece of rubber behind it and it doesn't so that's one flaw on the car. Um, also while we're there uh, we've got uh, one of the headlamp bezels with the, um, you know, the plastic chrome trim uh, has come off there. Um, and we are missing uh, one of these super complicated wiper assemblies for the driver's side. And I asked my mechanic about that and he was like, oh, those things just don't work, like take them off. Um, but I, I didn't, it'll be up to the next owner whether they just want to remove that one or find the other one. Um, and then it is missing this badge and I can't find a good one either. Um, I can find the grills with a badge, but the badge isn't great. I've been looking for uh, a great, this should be a V12 badge there. So I've been looking for that and I can't find it. Okay, so there's a few things on the car that, uh, that uh, the next owner can address if they like. Um, most important bits, of course, are the bodywork and the mechanicals. So let's go through that. The, the bonnet um, shows really no flaws. I mean, there's a couple tiny little stone chips that have been filled in there. And the driver's front fender, again, um, you know, there's really nothing much. The, the car has 93,000 kilometers, so what's that, about 55,000 miles or something like that? Um, so you expect some stuff. So there's no real flaws on the front fender. And uh, 
Uh, I did uh, touch up the areas just behind the uh, wheel wells uh, and uh, coated them with uh, Pour 15. They were not rusted, um, uh, but just to give it an extra bit of protection. And then I matched and sprayed the lower sill in that area. Uh, the doors, the driver's door shows a couple of uh, door dings. And if we look down the side of the car, it looks pretty good. I can't really see anything, um, any dings at all or imperfections in the, on the paint and the driver's side, okay? Uh, going to the rear fender, um, we do have a touched up stone chip there. Um, we have, uh, again, I, um, there's a jacking point right there. And when they put the hoist on it, they cracked the paint. When they cracked the paint, then this, this metal was had some surface rust on it, just a little bit. I cleaned it up, put pour 15 on it, and then touched it up just so it sealed the metal. Um, the rest of the fender uh, is, uh, rear fender is good. And I did the same thing on the rear fender. As I've mentioned, I've, uh, uh, it was a little bit of gravel rash. And so I uh, uh, sanded it down a little bit, put some pour 15 in this area. It's not rusty, uh, but just to coat it um, and then match some paint and sprayed it in just to protect the bottom of it. And it looks nice, okay? And you can't really, you can't tell that anything was done to it. Okay, so the rear boot lid uh, looks good. Um, there's some light swirling in it. I, I mean, if I had more time, I'd treat it to a, a cut polish. Um, I'll leave that to the, the next owner. There's some very slight swirling in it. Uh, you wouldn't notice outside. And um, the rear passenger fender, Again, looks good. Um, underneath there, I did the same thing. So in this area here, you might even see a faint line right there where I put the pour 15 in this area and then spray it, okay? Um, rear quarter, there's nothing really there. Um, we did had I had a couple of door dings. I just couldn't get out on this side, and you can see those. I think right there, okay. And that, and I couldn't get them out because there's a reinforcement beam behind there. And the guy said, "Well, you can take the uh, door panel off to get in there." And I didn't want to take the door panel off. I hate taking door panels off. They never go back on properly, so I didn't do that. Um, so apart from that, it is pretty good with no real detectable flaws in the paint, uh, anywhere. There's a, there was a scratch here that, uh, was filled in and buffed out and I could do a bit of a better job buffing that and getting rid of that residue. Um, but you really can't notice unless you're two inches away. Um, for instance, if I pull back, you just can't see it. Okay, but it is there. Um, there is a stone ship there that has been um, filled. Okay, so that's it for the bodywork. Um, so it's a rust-free, no winters car. There's no rust on the body. It's got its original paint and it's, it's never been hit. And except for... Um, you know, uh, respraying a little bit just to get rid of the gravel rash. Um, and again, I can show you what that looked like before I started, because I've got a, another XJS. You can see what happens to it there and around the drain hole. Okay, so I just kind of um, resprayed that to make it look a little bit better. All right, so that's the body of the car. Um, you're going through the chrome and the rubber. It's all really supple and, and all nice. We, we, did, we did have that problem there. Um, but the grill is in nice shape, apart from a missing badge. Um, the grill underneath here, if you notice, uh, you know, there's a little bit of uh, surface rust starting there. Um, and so that thing could be pulled out, sandblasted and powder coated and put back in if you were painted, if you were so inclined. Uh, but it's pretty good for um, being from the 80s. Uh, this headlight 
bezel is fine. Bumper cover isn't chewed up. It hasn't been knocked around. The rubber, uh, the rubber is still supple. And I guess there's a little mark there. Uh, what else? But pretty good. The light lenses are good. The plastic's good. Not faded. And that chrome is all in nice shape. Rubber's in nice shape. For the windscreen, uh, we have some mild pitting. But it looks to be like, like the original, like the original windscreen. Uh, wiper blade arms are nice. The cover for the uh, blower motor is nice. There's no cracks in the windshield and the uh, weather stripping is still reasonably supple. Okay. The chrome trim around the windscreen is decent. There's some light polishing marks, but uh, generally it's in nice shape. The windscreen surround is straight. It's not dented and the rubber is still pliable and soft. Door handles um, are nice. You know, it's got the original gaskets. You don't see like taping lines because of the door has been repainted. Um, the mirror has a nice shape. The mirror housing is good. Okay, so all that stuff's nice. The soft top is in nice shape. I don't know, I'm, I'm having trouble. I mean, it's okay, the fit of that. I could press on it a little bit harder, but I kind of don't want to do that. So I'm not really sure if just that's the way it is or I've just got to use a little bit more muscle to get that flat. Kind of, there is some give to it, but I just didn't want to try too hard uh, for fear of breaking something, okay? Um, the rear window is clear and there's no cracks and there's no rips in it. Um, and there's some earlier sh other shots of the car with the tonneau cover on and these, and these panels removed, okay? Um, same thing with the chrome trim around the uh, uh, the side windows on the passenger side, passenger mirror is nice, and all that stuff is in pretty good shape. And you know, there's a little bit of pitting in the glass, but uh, you know, it's the original, original windscreen. There's no evidence of the water getting past the seal or maybe rusting out some of these areas, which can be a very expensive fix on some cars. So, no, no evidence of that uh, happening. Um, the tires are brand new. Um, of Redestein Sprint Classics. They're speed rated. They're one of the few tires in the 215.70VR15 size that's correct for the car that also have the correct speed rating. And they were uh, they were expensive. They're almost $2,000 landed in Canada, okay? But I didn't scrimp and just put crappy tires on the car. Um, so I think that that should do it for the exterior. Um, you know, none of it is concours, none of it's show, but there's no real flaws either, I don't think. Um, you know, all the rubber, chrome, glass, paintwork uh, is all, um, is all, all looks really nice. The, the car, you know, the, the car looks great. Uh, you get up close, you notice, you know, a few uh, chips that have been filled in and uh, uh, a few scratches that have been polished, evidence of a few rock chips, etc. You know, the, the only the only thing that I think the car really should have is just get another one of these bezels and a, yeah, a couple hundred bucks or something like that. But um, I'll leave that to the next owner of the car who can improve it uh, as they see fit. Um, I did all that expensive stuff, which is all the mechanical work. So the next guy or girl can, uh, you know, do some of the cosmetics if they so desire. So inside the car, um it looks great um there's no there's no real flaws it's antelope uh is the exterior color and uh geez i forget the interior color but anyway it'll be in the documentation um everything works all the mirrors work all the switches work all the lights work um there's no warning lights on the car uh so everything works properly in the car the window motors work regulators everything functions properly on that uh this seal uh, actually on both on both cars in the same place uh it's torn just from people getting in and out of the car um the seats are really lovely they haven't been painted uh which is sometimes what happens when you get wear on the seats 
and you can take it to some upholstery place and they just basically paint the seat to, you know, make it look nice in pictures, but it kind of wrecks the aroma uh, of the seat and the feel of it. So this hasn't been done. It's honest uh, patina and light wear. I did put several applications of Leather Eek, which is a high-end leather conditioner on it. You can see it's a little bit wavy here because the sides of the seat and the Jaguars are vinyl and this is leather and the leather shrinks a little bit and pulls this in and you get a little bit of a wave. Um, but the seat leather is still, you know, now a little bit stiff when I got it, but it's really come back nicely, has a great aroma and is supple and there's no rips in the stitching on it as well. The headliner is this, uh, I don't know if it's wool or a synthetic. It actually kind of feels like wool. Um, you can see it's coming down a little bit. It could be re-glued to the top of the, um, the, uh, the top of these panels. Well, actually, you know what? Look at that. I fixed it. Um, uh, this is static electricity. Uh, okay, so uh, the carpets are nice. We have these over mats with a little bit of wear on them. You can see the carpet underneath, a little bit of wear there. But generally speaking, it's all um, nice inside and the carpets on the sill are nice. And of course, this is just a parcel shelf. Forgive this little goofy thing. I just wanted a cup holder. Uh, I'll take that with me. Um, so the back of the car is nice. There's no staining in the headliner, no water, you know, water damage or anything like that. And getting in the car, the dashboard is nice. There's no problems there. Uh, all the wood is in pretty good shape. For whatever reason, um, the glove boxes, they, the varnish is cracked on both cars, actually. On that car too, same thing. Um, but overall, the wood looks nice, and the fit uh, of the panels. That one, the, uh, the red one, does that too. I don't know. It sticks out a little bit. Uh, and that's nice. Now the stereo works. The trip computer works. The switches work. Um, the speed. The the uh, cruise control works. Uh, every function that I can tell in this car works perfectly. Uh, the fuel gauge is a little sticky. It works, but it's a little bit sticky. Um, all the headlights work, no warning lights. Uh, so all that's been sorted. The stereo works nicely. It's good sound. AC works. So there's no, there's no mechanical issues that I'm aware of on this car. I just spent $8,000 on it and I had a, a sit from XJ Auto go through it with a blank checkbook just saying sort the car out. Okay, so I'm not expecting any mechanical problems. Um, uh, and the in, and the subframe was removed, and we we got it not only all the stuff that needed to be done, but the stuff that should be done when you go through the trouble of getting into the engine bay, which is a little hard on these cars. Okay, so all that's nice. Passenger seat is nice, and really inside there's really not much to to fault, not much to complain about. It all looks like a really nicely well cared for car, and it hasn't really had any work done on the interior. Um, uh, which is good. Okay, so that is that. If we go into the trunk area, uh, we can see um, the tonneau, uh, which is a little bit hard to put on, but it is with all these things, these little fussy things. I had them on my Austin Healy too. Uh, this is the bag for the uh, hard top. Uh, there's the spare tire, it's a P5. It should have a black cover on it, and it doesn't, so that is missing too, but we do have the battery cover in. We have a, I'm not sure what happened there, something, maybe battery acid, I'm not sure what, what leaked on there, but it does have that. Uh, flaw, and then we do have the tools that are in there, packaged uh, properly, I don't think they've even ever been used. Okay, so, uh, boot lid, and everything there is, Original aerial works. And there's the inside. I noticed this just happened, and it's a little bit of a split in the vinyl. That's easy to fix. Um, it's not even the leather. And this isn't a that that isn't a flaw. That's just the way the leather uh, or the the seat is uh, is made. Um, uh, the leather feels nice. It smells nice. It's, it's actually a really beautiful car to drive. 
um, smooth and quiet and just, you know, it's just a lovely, a lovely old thing, okay? So that, I think, sums up the interior of the car. Again, not perfect, but, you know, about as good as you could reasonably expect for a 93,000 kilometer car. Um, I, don't, I don't think anybody is going to be disappointed uh, with uh, either the exterior, the interior, or the mechanicals of the car, okay? So uh, now we will go to the paint meter, which just demonstrates that uh, the car has all of its um, original paint. Okay, we will start on the uh, driver's side front fender and work our way around. Now, readings that vary by, you know, 100 micrometers, um, you know, that's just the way the, 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 the paint goes on and polish and so forth. So you're really looking for something that's, um, you know, uh, a mil difference or something like that. And we can see that this is all clustered around um, 200 micrometers, give or take 50 maybe. All right. Nineteen thirty-two. Sometimes you get a misread. If you see these numbers get like, like below 100, you know, that's a, a good indication that you probably want to be careful when you polish it because uh, it's actually possible to go right through the paint. And these lower areas, you know, they'd be the ones that you'd um, want to pay the, uh, the most attention to because that's where the cars rust generally and they're more likely to be repaired. Again, you get the odd misread, so. Okay, and on the sills. Sorry, it's upside down. I did touch up some areas. Um, there were just you, there was just some gravel rash, and so I just uh, sprayed in um, some paint to protect the metal and added a little bit of pour 15. It was never rusty, um, but I just wanted to give it that extra bit of uh, extra bit of protection. Okay. So I added that just basically at the trailing edge of each of the. Uh, for wheel arches where if you looked underneath the car you can see that's perfect uh, and I just uh, sprayed in uh, some touch-up paint uh, just to cover up that gravel rash and you can see it's still pitted but uh, I just wanted to seal the metal make sure there was no exposed metal and uh, it came up pretty good like there's no way you'd be able to tell 
that so uh, that that's been done. All right. Trunk hood. paint here. You can see that little faint line? That's where there's pore 15, that rust. And I just did that area just to give it an extra layer of protection. But all I did is replace the paint that was there, or the paint that was kind of blasted off. I didn't really add any paint to it. And there was no, there was no rust at all. I don't get it exactly straight. Sometimes I get a, a misread. So I think that it was fairly clear that this car hasn't had a repaint. Um, if you just wanted to check out, this is another one as well that's factory paint. And um, you know, the, uh, the markings on this Jag are, are the same uh, as the other one. This one has one of those kind of textured finishes like an undercoat that the, uh, that the other car did. And this car here, you know, has some of that kind of blasting and you know discoloration around uh, the drain tube there and so that's what i did is i cleaned this area up and matched the paint and just sprayed in a layer of paint and then i took some pore or i actually first i took some pore 15 uh which is a really really durable rust paint and painted this area here and around the drain tubes and then i blew in some paint there so that's what it would have looked like before and um and then I, I sorted it out. Also, this area here on the hoist, you can see that, you know, when people jack it up, they're not that careful. Um, and then they get the sill and then they chip the paint off and then they expose the metal and then that starts to rust. So on this car as well, it had some of that. And uh, I cleaned that it up as well. I'll do the same thing um, with this car here. Um, so that when you look at it from underneath, you know, it's, it's, it's perfect. The sills are perfect or they look perfect anyway. Um, if you wanted to, you know, you could probably get it refinished and have some of this sort of modeled, um, you know, th un painted undercoat type material. So that, 
these two cars are the same year so the, you know not that different and they're both 86 jag xjs xc's sorry um sc's um so they would have left the factory the same but the red one when it was new got some of this coating which is a little bit more durable so if you wanted you know you might get a body shop to do something like that on this car and of course it would all depend on its use probably now as a classic car it's gonna get pretty light use and you're not gonna have to worry about it but anyway okay so that's the paint depth uh which uh which i think goes to show it's uh an original dry car that's never been in an accident and never had any paint work except for the little areas that I touched up. Okay. Okay, so let's first take a look at the tires. They're of Redistine uh, Sprint Classics. I just bought them. They've got about 10 miles on them, and they're one of the few uh, speed rated uh, tires you can get in the size of 215. 70 VR15. There's a Pirelli P5 and a Michelin XWX and these uh, these weren't quite as expensive as the XWX's which are like in Canada around $600 a tire um, but they look uh, they look period correct and most importantly they're the right weight and speed rating for the car. Um, so the alloys have never been refinished and uh, you can tell there's a little bit of oxidation in the clear uh, minor chipping uh, around the um, around the Jag emblem, but they, you know, from any more than a foot away, they look great. Uh, you can see all the lug nuts there, which aren't uh, rusty. And the uh, rear tire, I mean, that looks perfect. It's interesting that on a car with um, inboard rear disc brakes, uh, they don't make a mess of the wheels because there's no brake dust in the wheel area. So that's, uh, that's kind of had a bit of a laugh there when you get the the brakes that are inboard, you can see the rear hub, there's no brake disc there, so they don't make the, you don't get the brake dust on the wheels. Uh, the other rear wheel, again, you see a little bit of discoloration, but uh, otherwise looks good. And this wheel, we do have a little minor scrape there, but again, um, looks nice. Okay. Uh, let's walk around the car. Um, now, when you take the wheels off and you look underneath the car, you know, it is dirty. Um, uh, so what you're looking for is just sort of advanced rust or, uh, you know, any, any mechanical problems. Uh, in this car, we did the front brakes, so those are new, brakes and pads. Uh, the, uh, it has the original undercoat in the uh, wheel well where you see it's shiny. I just touched that up with a bit of spray paint uh, because the undercoat had peeled off. It's perfect metal underneath that. And I do have a photograph to show you what it looked like before, um, but I just did that to uh, coat the metal. Okay, so we have the front valence and it all looks um, pretty good under there. There's no damage. This piece, of course, is pretty vulnerable. We got a little bit of chipping there. And we can see a little dent there where it hit a curb somewhere, okay? So that is the wheel arch in the uh, uh, left-hand front. And again, new brake disc. And if we look through the fasteners and so on, it's all pretty good. I mean, uh, there's no, uh, you know, a lot of cars, you know, that are even a few years old can have completely rusted fasteners and, and this one doesn't. It, it, it wasn't driven in the uh, the winter, obviously. Okay, so let's go under here. Now, there is a splash guard that uh, should be fitted right there. And I do happen to have another XJS. And I'll show you what that should look like. There is the splash guard in place on this one. Um, and for whatever reason, it was taken off this car. I'm not sure if the previous owner thought that it had less uh, engine heat. Um, but whatever, I don't have it. It's only a few hundred bucks uh, if you want to buy it. Um, you can see some of the hoses. Of course, this car had an $8,000 mechanical service. And one of the things you do is replace some of the high pressure hoses and so on. So that's new. Uh, and uh, this car uh, does not leak. Um, 
and uh, you know the underside is uh, completely dry which is pretty rare for an XJS although you might expect that after spending eight thousand dollars on it uh, okay so there's no damage there's no advanced rust um, you know there's no you know the sills you know the jacking points and so on are a little bit uh, vulnerable uh, with these cars and so if they were going to rust you know they'd start in these lower areas and this car uh, hasn't um, there was uh, some uh, some gravel rash uh, and I did uh, touch up uh, these areas and I, again I can show you what they looked like before um, but I just wanted to seal the paint on that so I did touch up the uh, area right behind each of the four wheels and this jacking point uh, you know in the past people jack it up and they don't get the they don't get the um, uh, the hoist in the right place and then it it uh, cracks the paint there and then it starts to rust okay so um, I also uh, scraped that off treated it with uh, pour 15 and sealed it and then touched it up okay so I did that on the four corners um, underneath uh, we can see and we've got photographs of it as well and you can see that it's not leaking coolant it's not leaking uh, engine oil it's not leaking transmission fluid it's not leaking power steering fluid um, and that's kind of normal for these cars <laughs> to uh, to leak everything they have okay um, but this one uh, like I said has been serviced and uh, there's no damage to the floor pans there's no um, uh, rusting of the lower sills. We can see this, uh, this um, uh, undercoat is starting to peel off. Um, I can just do that there, but it's perfectly, it's perfectly clean metal underneath. Um, so this, this car would be a candidate for cryoblasting just to get rid of all that and then recoat it with some, um, uh, with a, an oil base, because we can see you know, in places that the, this undercoating. If moisture gets underneath there, sometimes it can cause more problems than if it was just bare steel. So that's something I might look at, or else just like I did in the wheel arches, just get some more undercoating or spray paint and, and cover it up. Uh, the exhaust is not, it's got some surface corrosion, but there, there's no soft, there's no, there's no breaks in the exhaust and, uh, uh, there's no leaks in it, okay? It just kind of looks kind of crappy. Um, back here, we've got the rear subframe, and that's how, and you can see the inboard um, disc brakes. Now, if you want to change the brakes, of course, what you have to do is take that whole subframe down, take the exhaust out, lower the whole thing, and, you know, it's not a, you know, it's a... I don't know how many hours it would be, probably five or six hours to get at the rear pads, all in all. So this one doesn't have much wear on the on the rotors. So they, you know, maybe there's 25% gone, but on the rear brakes on this, that's, you know, that could be another 20 years of driving. Um, U-joints, all the fasteners are in good shape. And again, there's no, we got a little bit, I mean, there's just discoloration um, on this, you can see the undercoating peeling a bit. So the next time you do do the rear brakes, you'd probably take the subframe off and, and refinish it. And in the rear, we have the, you know, the alloy hub carrier and the um, uh, inner arch. And again, you don't see any rust in here. Um, the mud flap, uh, you know, there's a tendency for dirt to pile in behind that and it can rust out this piece. And I did, um, I haven't tightened that up yet. Um, I, uh, and I did refinish this area here with some pour 15 and then matched the paint and sprayed it in um, just to, again, seal the paint, okay? Um, it matches, you, you can't tell, it matches perfectly. Um, uh, okay, and here's the rear of the car. Again, some more of this, uh, uh, undercoating which is starting to peel exhausts are in good shape and there you go 
Okay, so don't be scared. Um, I'll go through this engine with, uh, with my mechanic, a set, uh, uh, and we can describe what we've done. But basically, we took the front subframe off, dropped the suspension, got at the bottom of the engine, did a bunch of gaskets and high-pressure hoses uh, for the engine oil, for the power steering, and did kind of everything that would be prudent to do once you've gone through the trouble of lowering the front subframe. We fixed the leaks in the car. Okay, so I'll, I'll go through it with him, but it runs beautifully. Um, it starts, you know, starts instantly. It runs cool. The engine has no drivability problems. We did have a persistent uh, fuel cutout uh, that was traced back to a faulty connection that we were running around. It took a while to sort out, but uh, but we found it and we sorted it. Um, so in the engine bay, I didn't really make an effort to try to beautify it. And the last thing I wanted to do was go take a high pressure hose and clean it up, clean it all the dirt off to make it look nice in the photographs. Because uh, who knows what would have rusted and what I would have done. So I just left the engine bay alone after the service, and it looks just like. Uh, an engine bay. But what you, you, what you will see is, you know, there's no corrosion on any of the bolts um, uh, and uh, there's no evidence that any hack has been in here butchering the car, uh, which there hasn't. So this is all factory and it's all stock and this car has been looked after by, you know, Jaguar experts its whole life. Um, the uh, original owner was a Jaguar fan and in fact had a Rover service facility in the 50s and uh, after that a, um, a forklift repair business. So it was a very mechanical owner who really knew, you know, he just knew what he was doing. He's been around machines and machinery his entire life. So um, uh, the uh, mechanical aspects of the car were addressed by a long-term competent uh, uh, mechanic with lots of experience with Jag V12's en engines on an open checkbook base basis to just sort out anything that needed to be sorted out. Okay, so that's the way uh, this that's the way I reconditioned this car, and uh, it should uh, you know give the owner um, you know relatively trouble free, enjoyable motoring for the foreseeable future. I'm not saying that something's going to come up because that's just the nature of these cars, um, but you're not getting into uh, a situation where there is you're tackling a whole bunch of deferred maintenance. And somebody's who somebody's been in there who just uh, didn't know what they were doing, and you've got some extended diagnostics to figure out what was done to the car. Everything in this car, mechanically speaking, was done properly. Uh, you'll see a vice grip there. I didn't bother replacing the hood struts. They're about fifty bucks each if somebody wants to do that. Um, so that's about the only thing that I didn't do uh, with the engine. Uh, so um, I think that you know whoever wants to own this car next, has the confidence that, uh, you know, we've got a, a unrusted car with original paint and no his, no accident history that's been given to a long-term JAG specialist and given everything that it needed and is ready to go and it's on the proper tires. And there were no, uh, you know, there's there was no corners cut and, you know, I didn't try to save a thousand bucks by putting cheap tires on or skip a bunch of parts that, you know, I didn't have to replace high pressure power steering hoses, but you know, if you've got, if you're, if they're accessible and the hose is only 200 bucks, you might, you, you know, you really should do that. Um, but not everybody would, like if you're just strictly doing this for dollars and cents, you know, you try to recondition it for the cheapest price possible. And that's not what I did here. I, I had an open checkbook. I wanted to make sure that this car, uh, you know, that if I decided to own it myself, that I could, and and that's a test that I use with with all of my cars. I I, I if, if nobody else wants to buy it, then I got to be happy with it myself because I'm happy to drive it. Just so happens I don't really need two of them that badly. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's start this Jag up, and uh, we'll show you what comes out of the tailpipe uh, when the car uh, hasn't been run, and then uh, I'll show you a close up of the engine, and uh, we'll see that it runs runs pretty sweetly, as you might expect after spending $8,000 on it, so we'll get it going.
and a very steady idle, uh, doesn't hunt, uh, and it's beautifully smooth. I mean, it really is a great engine. There is one thing remaining to be done, and that is what they call the jockey pulley, which is the tensioner for the fan belt. And you won't notice it now, but when we started it and it was below zero, it was a little bit noisy, it went away pretty quickly. But uh, my mechanic has said, tells me that's something you don't want to fool around with. If the part's been ordered, it's only $130. That's only an hour to put in, but it, it tensions the fan belt and the AC. Uh, and if it, if it goes, there's a danger that it can enter the fan and a whole bunch of damage. So that's the part that it doesn't really need. And if it went to a hot climate, you probably wouldn't need to do it. But it's one of those things that if you have a long-term jack mechanic who's seen, you know, seen everything before, he'll tell you, yeah, the minute that thing starts squeaking, then just replace it. Don't take any chances. And so that part is ordered through Moss. I haven't got it yet. Not sure it's a special order. Uh, so it may or may not be installed in the car, but it will be supplied with the car if the auction ends before I can install it. Okay. We have a look at the interior. We can see the tachometer, and uh, it'll get up to uh, five. I guess, I guess that's kilopascals, not uh, not bar. Uh, but the car runs cool. It never really goes above half, and the idle's steady and none of the warning lights go on at all. 